The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 22nd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, but you've got a question, go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject, Teddy, if you'd be good enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a bit of a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 44 points, about one-tenth percent. The S&P is flat, up two points. The NASDAQ is not flat, six-tenths percent to the upside, 95 points. Russell's down 15. Semis are up 12. Tranny's up uh, 80 points. You've got gold down 18 bucks. Looks like an A to B equals CD to the downside. Silver off 37 cents, an A to B equals CD to the downside there as well. Lights we crude trade out at 69.70. That's just a consolidation with inside profiles. Natural gas is off two pennies. 30 treasuries down basically about one point, printed out 127.08. Now leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you got super micro computer up 18 bucks, 8%. Lam Research up 13 bucks, a little over 2%. Madrigal Pharmaceuticals, 5% or 12 bucks. Celsius Holdings up 9 bucks, at 6%. Uh, to the downside, it's FactSet Research off 24 bucks, that's nearly 6%. Equinix, 22 bucks, 3%. Gulfport Energy, 12 bucks, nearly, uh, well, 11, low over 11%. BlackRock down 11, 1.6% out there. So those are the movers, those are the shakers. Where do you want to begin? Well, let's begin by take a look at market breadth out here. Let's start with that. Let's look at short term. Uh, let's look at short term. Let's pull over the short term market. But this will be for the NASDAQ 100, the NQ. You've got 32 trade above, 26 trading below. That's bullish market breadth for the uh, 30 minute time frame. Let's check on the ES mini out here, see if we've got some unanimous votes. And here we take a look at the S&P 500. We have, come on, baby, 81 above. 236 below. So there is our choppy market. Expect these choppy conditions. If you can't get it right on the 30 minute chart, well, just tells us to expect choppy conditions. If we look at the other time frames out here, we'll begin by taking a look at the NASDAQ 100. We're bearish for the 60, the 240, and the daily. In the case of the daily, you have 17 above and 38 below. So Odds right now are still favoring the sellers, and that says we should go take a look at uh, what's going on on the intraday charts. Real quickly, you're to take a look at the S&P 500, see what its signals are. It just has a 60 and 240. On its daily time frame, you still have 133 above and 112 below. So again, you should expect to anticipate choppy conditions. At least that's what the market breadth indicators are communicating to you and I. If we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced Klein oscillator. It is now below zero, closed above zero yesterday. It needs Needs two consecutive closes below zero to tell us that sellers are the ones that are in control. But that is its message to you and I. Now let's switch over and go take a look at the charts for the NQ. Let's dive down into them. We know that we've got bullish market breadth on the 30, but bearish on the six. Whoops. Shoot. Bearish on the... Um, bearish on the uh, 60 and the 240 and the daily 
I change windows here. Let's see if I can do it correctly this time around. There we go. So now in the upper left-hand corner, you've got the daily time frame. I did share with you at the beginning of the show that there are two new bottom profile levels, one generated by the black uh, background system we signal. That's at 14.950. The Ninja Trader uh, system is calculated in 14.845. We use them both, but they actually support range, 14.845 to 14.950. The actual low of the trading session so far, it's close but no cigar, but it's still close, 14.964. That'll work for me. If we look at the five-hour time frame chart, very likely by 2 p.m., but I don't know for sure, but very likely by 2 p.m., this will complete a Gartley buy pattern. What should occur here? Well, at least price should get up to its oscillator and change line. Now, what price is dealing with here first is the uh, resistance level established by its market profile. This is for the five-hour time frame. That level is up at 15,151. Above that, we'd be looking at a move to about 15,180. The four-hour time frame chart also has a completed by the D-point pattern or a Gartley buy pattern. That took place right at its breakout level of support of 14.976. This says pay attention to the four-hour time frame. Now, we looked at the four-hour time frame for the NQ, and it had negative market breadth. Price ran right up in resistance. That is its green oscillator and change line. That is currently printing out at, to give you the exact number, 15.150. And then above that, at 15.171, you've got uh, resistance. That is its bearish structured top of that profile. So resistance zone is where it's trading into right now. Uh, that is between the range 15.171 at the top, and the center is at 15.111. As long as price remains above that 15,111 area, it's going to try to take that area out. 15,171, really 15,181 being a key level of resistance. That if price closes above, tells us about a further rally. That further rally should last for a couple of days. Couple of days, Steve. Oh, how in the heck can you come up with that? Well, that's pretty easy because what you and I do here is we take a look at consecutive movements, either to the upside or or to the downside that's represented by this chart here the black digits represent consecutive moves to the upside the red digits are consecutive moves to the downside yesterday was bar number three typically in this rally here off of the lows what we have seen is no more than a four day consecutive a move to the downside. That's not the norm. The norm would be two or three days. Well, then to the upside, you would expect a two-day rally. Today could be day number one. Where could that second day rally take us to? Well, the top or the center of its bearish structure profile is at 15,265. Now, You've got one also at 15.16. Well, let me actually get the right number. 15.160. Again, we have profile divergence, but we still use the same data. What I would share with you is that more likely than not, on a two-day rally, we would expect price to get up towards that oscillator and change line that is currently printed out at 15.260. That is the daily time frame. Even if we get a lower close today, then you should really expect at least a move for about two days. I suspect that because price got down to the bottom of that daily profile, and as you take a look at these charts here, you have all kinds of roads momentum indicator bottom patterns for those intraday time frames that means the 120 the 60 the 30 the 15 and the 10 minute charts out here so what we have to do is watch those resistance levels on a further rally 15150 was one of them 15171 15180 those are the areas to watch and if price closes about that 15180 then we're looking to move to about the 15250 level out there that's what we see when we take a look at the nq as we go to breakout here, I'll pull up the charts for the ES Mini. We'll do the same type of thing. Of course, I'd love to hear from you so I can cover whatever it is that uh, you would like me to review. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Give us a call at 877-927-6648. We're inside the Tiger's Den. A few requests would be wonderful. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's go take a look at that uh, ES Mini. Uh, I'll take just a moment here for these charts here to update, and we'll get over to the ES. Now, we had a request inside the Tiger's Den uh, from um, Roger. Roger wanted to take a look at levels for the SPY for intraday trading. I would suggest that you look at the ES Mini to see how it's trading, uh, and uh, especially for, for, for its day trade. So with regard to day trades, the shortest period of time that I have out here is a 10-minute time frame chart. Then we go 10, 15, 30, 60, 120, 240, then the five-hour and the uh, daily. So with regard to um, what is the SPY doing, just to get a bigger feel for it, what we have here is, and we do have new, uh, different profiles, but differences between the white, the Ninja Trader charts, and the e-signal charts out there. So it, it happens sometimes. We use that to our advantage. On the white background chart here, what we can see is this is a bullish structured profile. It's slightly bearish structured on the uh, daily out there it's really almost balanced on the white i should say on the black background charts but on the white background charts what price has done uh rogers price is pulled back into its support zone support zone so at the bottom of the profile you have buyers at the top of the profile you have sellers it's the center line where you have both buyers and sellers now there's no way for me to differentiate was at 50 50 is it 60 40 it's simply i just go with 50 50 and if that is closer to the bottom then we have buyers in that range that range right now being 43 62 to 43.99 so price got down to a level of support when price gets to a level of support we then roger take a look at the intraday time periods and see if we can find any kind of bottoming signals in this case here with the market moving lower turns out that you already have a confirmed td9 count bottom for the five hour time frame chart that took place at nine o'clock doesn't need this 10 o'clock bar to complete but what should take place here is the five hour chart is telling us that price should bounce up towards 44.30 now the daily time frame at 44.24 is where you have its oscillator and change line so that becomes a level that i would expect a bounce to move up to if price closes above the daily oscillator and change line 
Well, then we could be making a run for that high again at 44.75. So watch 44.30, though. That would be the next area. You have a TD nine count bottom on the four hour time frame chart. This is a bullish structured profile. On a four hour basis, the next bar would be to, uh, two o'clock. Yeah, next bar. No, the next bar is at, uh, yes, two o'clock out there. A close at two o'clock above. 44.10 is going to suggest a move to 44.28. Two-hour time frame chart, what do we have out here? Well, with regard to its patterns, it's more of an A to B equals CD to the downside out there. But I don't even know that it's really completed. I mean, there's several. But the one that really sticks out to me here first, Roger, is this one. This is what I would be using. I'll just simply try to move. I say try because I seem to have lost my touch here. I don't know how. There we go. Just move that over to so here we've got an A to B equals CD to the downside hasn't completed. It would complete at 43.59, right where its TD nine count breakout level is. But right now, for a two hour time frame, what's really important to see here, regardless of whether we have a bottom or not, is prices trading above. It closed at that uh, 10 o'clock time frame above the top of a bearish structured profile for the two hour time frame. We're still trading above it. This is telling us, even though it hasn't bottomed, it wants to rally. Its price target to the upside is 44.37. So we're kind of getting a message here uh, um, with regard, Roger, with regard to what the larger time frames are telling us. So now on the shorter term time frame, what do we have out here? You've got roads with indicator bottoms on the 60, the 30, the 15, and on the uh, 10 minute. So on a on a on a 30 minute chart out there, if there was a buy. It would. I'd have to say it's around 4,400. I don't know. And price already got down there. That's the problem with with now making that call. So here, if we take a where where if we take a look at this, you've got a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. We get a bit of a rally, and then as we came into that 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock session, I should say, what price did, Roger here pulled all the way back to test support. And support was that red oscillator and change line, as well as these profile levels. It rejected those. What this chart, the 30-minute chart, is telling us is it wants to move higher. Now, its price target to the upside is 44.34. So hopefully you've been taking notes and writing those things down. I could not get the same set of facts and data if we go take a look at the 30-minute, uh, or not the 30-minute, if I go take a look at the cash indices, such as the uh, SPY out here. Where did I put that? Did I put it here? I did not. Did I put it here? I did not. Did I put it here? I did not. Oh, man. Okay, it's going to be door number three. Door number four. Here's the spy. Here is a 30-minute chart out there. And so on a 30-minute chart, let's just see what its signals are. Its signal shows that right now what the SPY is confirming is a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, what I don't know is in the next seven minutes, well, the, whether this candle will retain its bullish structure. In order to do that, it just needs to close halfway inside this prior, it's the prior bar out there. So at this stage, I'll go with the fact that the 30-minute is also confirming a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. Its resistance is at 435.97. That's the top of its bearish structured profile. Price closes above that, that would suggest a further rally. So that's about the best I can do for you on the SPY. It's it's really those intraday charts on the equity future contract that are going to provide you with the best data. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Roger, with regard to your intraday trading. Also, you want to note down on your pad of paper out there, folks, at the time of 1235. Why is that? Because that's when Stevie will be eating his, uh, his smoked mackerel. No, I'm just kidding you. Well, I could be, but that's not the reason. The reason is because that is when Apogee comes in. That is the exact point in time at 1235. I could give you the seconds, but we're not going to worry about that. At 1235, that is when the moon will be furthest from Earth during the current lunar cycle. I write it down on everything that you're trading, that you actively trade, exactly what that price point is right then and there at 1235, especially in the equity future contracts. But as a uh, as others have done some further research, they found that that is actually working for all kinds of instruments out there. What do you mean working, Steve? Oh, well, if we just simply switch over here, I'll take a look at, I'll pull up the uh, the perigee charts, the prior perigee charts. Uh, those are going to end basically in about an hour or so. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Right here. So here I've got them marked as an example for the ES Mini. I'll just pull this back. This was old, whoops. 
There you go. It was marked at uh, 43.33.24. Here, if we take a look at the NQ, uh, that level was 14.761. We can see how that area, once price got above it, really acted as support, and price just simply catapulted off of it. We can also see here inside of Goldilocks that it, uh, I'm sorry, that's not gold, that's lights recruited, 71.69. That was a resistance level. And Goldilocks here, look at how Perigee acted as resistance the entire time period that was in effect, that 1979.90. So you want to take a look at it from a short-term standpoint. That really applies to you, Roger, looking for short-term help out there because if price is above that, it tells us about a further intraday rally. If price is below it, it tells that price wants to head towards the bottom. Uh, Danny in New York want to take a look at ticker symbol TG. B. So let's get over to those white background charts. Let's see if that's where I put it. No, it is not. We'll switch back over there in a moment. I know I'm on the black ones. So give me a second. We'll do that. And I'm not sure what Danny is uh, looking for. It doesn't really matter. We're just simply going to take a look at the TGB, which is trading out right now at about a buck forty. Uh, it uh, last trade fired off at a buck thirty nine. So on Taseco Mines, it did. What has this done? So it it looks like to me it formed a buy the D point pattern with this bullish hammer candle back here on May 31st. And what that did, Danny, is it led to a um, move, a rally right up to breakdown resistance. A buck 50 is the number out there. The actual high that took place on June 15th was $1.50. How does that work, Stevie wants to know. I don't know how it works. I just know that it works. You really want to understand the TD9 count pattern out there. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Yes, uh, DKC, uh, today is Apogee. Um, oh, it's Apogee, uh, so it's furthest stuff. Yeah, furthest from Earth. That's what I, I thought I said if I said perigee. I was showing you where the perigee pivot points were, just an example for how they actually work. But uh, it is Apogee pivot point that comes in. 1235 is the number you want to note down on your pad of paper. So let's get back to TGB here. So with regard to TGB, forms a bottom, price gets up to resistance and pulls back and tests support. One of those support levels are the oscillator and change line. We can see that is tested and rejected the last uh, few days out here. Now, to Seiko Mines, it's really, um, you know, trading between that support level and resistance, which is up at that buck fifty. At a dollar fifty, you don't see it here as well. That's also the top of its profile. On a weekly basis, what you've got out here is uh, price consolidating with inside its profile between a buck forty nine and a buck thirty, between a buck fifty and one hundred four on the uh, monthly time frame. So, Danny from New York City, that's what I see. Price made that rally right up, pulled back and tested support. If you're in this position, I'd still stick with it. Um, but again, I don't know where you entered or anything along those lines. Is it a buy right now? Um, probably would need to do further research just to understand the Seiko mines. I don't recall what's inside there. Um, is, is the Seiko more gold, silver, copper? I don't know the answer to that, but I want to see what's going on with those instruments before I would enter some type of long position. Let's go to the next request out here. This is for John, who is short Lightspeed Crude. Um, so we're going to go take a look at the actual Lightspeed Crude charts out here. That way I can provide the best information. So when we take a look at the at the uh, monthly time frame, you can see that price has tested this area of support. That's the bottom of its monthly profile for the last three months, or three of the last four months out here. And that level is at 69.42. The weekly shows a really, really clear consolidation pattern with price below red oscillator and change line and the bottom of its profile. The bottom that consolidation around the 65.50-ish type area. Um, Thank you, Danny. Uh, it's copper. So if it's copper, then uh, Tiseco is a uh, buy out there because copper. Uh, well, I have to see how copper is trading today, but it's um, but uh, it's uh, it looks pretty bullish to me. Uh, with regard to uh, lights, we crew very likely headed back to the bottom at consolidation. Say that's at about sixty six ninety seven. You can see on the daily time frame that TD nine count breakout level was tested and rejected way back in the MA time frame. It was tested again. Um, back on June the 12th. So that is a real key level of support, 66.97. So if you are short, what you want to understand is at 68.70, you've got the support bottom of its profile, then 66.97 would be another area. On the intraday charts out here, we do not see any kind of bottoming patterns with one exception, and that is the 120 minute chart. It does look like by 12 noon, about 27 minutes from now, this will confirm a TD9 count bottom. That pattern would then be completed at 2 p.m. So you still could get a lower low out there. I'd watch that two hour time frame chart for lights we crude, uh, and especially uh, since you are short and maybe you're looking more intraday. So John, I hope that helps you out with regard to lights we crude. Let's close this up just simply because I've got a lot of resources that are being used at the moment. And the next thing that you wanted to look at was the Russell 2000. So with regard to the Russell 2000, we'll just leave these charts up here for the moment. Then I'll get to the detail. The Russell 2000 has a TD9 count and a sell the D point pattern top out here with price consolidated with inside its profile. Now, the bottom of that profile or support is at 1852. The actual low today is at 1857. You may have gotten as much out of that short at least for the next day or two, if we're correct with regard to the NQ and that it should uh, bounce for a couple of days out here, that is likely to bleed over into the Russell 2000. Now, let's actually go take a look at its intraday charts out here. We're looking at the future contract, that is, a futures contract. And here what we're looking for is any kind of a bottoming signal. So whereas on the uh, ES, I believe that we were taking a look at, where we looked at the, uh, oh, that was oil. We looked at that 120 minute chart. I don't have a uh, bottoming signal yet from an intraday standpoint on the Russell 2000. Now I'm looking at the five hour, four hour, two hour, one hour. When I come back to the 30 minute time frame chart, there's likely an A to B equal CD pattern that has completed out here. There's likely, yeah, there's likely several. So you've got the bullish reversal candles out there. So to the downside, if it's going to continue to move further down, remember you got that daily profile support level, you really need to see it close below 1857. But I don't think that support area on the daily profile is down much further than that. Where was that at? That was at 1852. I don't have the 
bottom out here to tell you to exit that position. Just the daily is saying, just be cautious out there. Just be cautious. So that's what I see when I take a look at the Russell 2000. John, I hope that that helps you out. Uh, we had another request, uh, one from, this one comes from Pork Belly inside the Tiger's Den. And right now, after that three-week vacation, I sort of feel like a pork belly myself. So I'm looking forward to getting that back off. But let's see if we can find pork belly charts out here. That might be more helpful. Uh, let's try this. Uh, no, that wasn't it. And this is AOSL that we're going to take a look at as soon as we can find it. There we go. So now we've got AOSL. AOSL is Alpha and Omega Semiconductor. So Alpha and Omega Semiconductor, what have they done here? Well, right now, this is trading above, does not have a topping pattern. It needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a roach momentum indicator top. That has not transpired, pork belly. So what price may be doing, just in sympathy of the market, is pulling back to test support, which in this case is trading above. And that's at 29.98 as well as at 20.30.07, the green oscillator and change line. So conditions here are bullish. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. Price ran into resistance. Now, if this is only a counter trend move, you would expect that price would find resistance at 31.92. The actual high for the week so far is 31.84. Is that close enough for our work? It absolutely is close enough for our work out there. What I don't know, what you don't know, is this just a counter trend move? Why would just a counter trend move find resistance at 31.92 or that would be it for the rally? Well, the reason is because this was the weekly chart we're looking at. In the center is a bullish structured profile. When you close below a bullish structured profile for more than two consecutive sessions, and here it did it for a couple of months, then any moves to get back inside the box, which it has done here over the course of the last uh, three, four weeks out here, any move to get inside there, if it does get back inside, which it did at 28.89, where price would run into resistance is where that, again, you've got the block of sellers between 28.89. We know that block needs help. Right, because they couldn't hold price, and so they're relying on that seller group that's up at 31.92. So, you don't have a top on the daily. You do have where price could find a counter trend move. Would you exit the position if you were long? And the answer is no. If price got close below 29.98, then yeah, maybe I would uh, consider it, or at least 28.89. On the uh, monthly time frame chart, nothing really helping us here uh, that I can see. Uh, I can uh, draw in what does not look like a completed A to B equals CD to the downside. So with regard to Alpha and Omega Semiconductor, given a somewhat conflicting signals, I'd rely on the daily. And I'd rely on the daily, which right now is telling you to stay in that position if you are long. So I hope that helps you out. Next request coming in from Dennis. And Dennis wanted to take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft did complete a roads momentum indicator top. It did that on Thursday when it generated that dark cloud cover candle. Now what we have is price consolidated with inside its daily profile. Looked like it was toast yesterday, French toast that is, because it closed below the bottom of its profile, which is 334.60. Right now, it says that was a one hit wonder and it really didn't bust through support. So if it doesn't bust through support, where's Microsoft likely to head to on this potential just two day rally? I'd say 340.22 to 342.16. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Still the mixed bag out there. The Dow's down 13. S&P's up 7. NASDAQ's up 119. Russell is off 13. Semi's up 25 points. We're going to go take a look at NVIDIA. That's for Joey D inside the Tiger's Den. And NVIDIA is strong like bull. You can see it has triggered a road momentum indicator signal, but no bearish reversal candle out here. So what price is really just doing right now is just consolidating with inside its profile levels. The support area is the bottom of that profile at 412.79. Resistance to the top of that profile at 439.79. 90 out there. The weekly time frame chart shows that this week should complete bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, it's, I took out last week's high, and my experience is, statistically that is, when you do get a successful bar number eight, 90% of the time this will complete a TD9 count. Now, what we don't know is will that high be on bar number nine? That would be next week or the bar following it, the following week, which would take us into that July 4th weekend. I don't have the answer to that question, but what we do know is the daily time frame does not have a top. So without the daily time frame having a top, we would say at this point in time that uh, likely this rally will extend itself inside of NVIDIA. The monthly chart does not show any reason for this not to. In fact, could we just take a look at the last set of swing points, the TD9 count top, the TD9 count bottom? The 1.272 expansion of that level, it's not shown on this chart, but I do know what it is, is at 411. And we're above 411. This suggests that maybe it wants to make an expansion of that level. And that expansion could take us all the way up to 493. Now, on a monthly basis, the swing point that um, that it was passing had 1.08 million shares. It was passed with a total of 1.16. So on a weekly basis, that's this swing point right here, the swing point here where it's labeled bar number eight, 1.081. When this was passed last month, it was 1.169. You have a weekly confirmed A to B equals C to the upside inside of NVIDIA. The one to one would take you to 423. So it looks to me like NVIDIA still has further to run to the upside. And then as price gets up towards that, um, oh, we're already above the one to one, 423, 509 would be the uh, next uh, price level for that A to B equals CD pattern out there. So Joey D, I hope that provided you with the information needed for NVIDIA. The next request coming in from Zakuda inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Tesla. 
Now, in the case of Tesla, uh, yesterday it generated a sell the D point pattern. It did that because you've got A to B. This is like a one to one, 2.618 expansion. I'm not going to worry about which size of the C to D leg, but it was confirmed with a bearish engulfing candle. That confirms the uh, top out there. Now, what price is doing is it is trading above its green oscillator and change line. That is a momentum line. When you are above that, that is a bullish signal. But price with inside its profile, price finding resistance today at the top of that profile, which at 261.57. The signal here has been neutralized. As long as price remains above that green oscillator and change line, 257.41 right now, it becomes neutral. If price closes below that, well, then we'd be looking for move back to support. Now it'd be at 241.95. On a weekly time frame, we have the A to B equal CD. This would need a bearish reversal candle to confirm a Gartley sell pattern. The monthly time frame is bullish with price above 244.16. That's the monthly oscillator unchanged line out there. So with regard to Tesla, it's a sell the D point. It's neutral for its daily time frame. No other topping signals, weekly or monthly. Um, you're just neutral. I think you have to watch how this uh, trades out there. See if 241.95 holds the support or does 261.57 fail as resistance out there. So Joey D, I hope that that helped you out with regard to NVIDIA and Zakuda. Hope that helped you out with regard to Tesla. Nicholas wrote in and Nicholas wanted to take, or uh, this was Alton, I apologize. Alton wrote in and he wants to take a look at Pfizer. PFE is the uh, ticker symbol out here. I believe the question was buy, hold, or sell? Well, you probably get your answer by watching the bottom of its profile out here. This formed a TD9 count top. It completed that pattern on June the 14th. Now what price is doing is testing support. That support level is the bottom of its profile. Alton, that is at 38.58. If price closed below 38.58, odds then favor move back to breakout support, and that's at 37.70. As far as volume is concerned, uh, today you've done about 6 million shares out there. Yesterday you did about uh, 17 million shares. So volume looks to be fairly heavy inside of Pfizer on a weekly basis. You just have a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside of profiles, 3678 to 4041 out there. The monthly chart, you're below profile. That suggests an eventual move back to 3576 out here. So... Um, is it a buy, sell, or hold? It's not a buy. I'm not giving you the buy here, although price is pulling back to a level of support. The 30-minute chart, let's see what the 30-minute chart here for Pfizer looks like. PFE, it just completed, actually, Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. So you should see a bit of a uh, lift here. That lift should take us to about 38.70. If price got above that, well, you could get up to 39.45 out there. I thought you said it wasn't a buy, Steve. Intraday on the 30-minute, it looks like it is. On the daily, I'm not so sure. And volume seems to be accelerating to the downside. So that's why I would be cautious as we speak right now. So I hope that helps you out. Alden, thanks much for taking the time to write in. Nicholas wants to take a look at IBM. So as we switch over to the IBM charts, let me see if I can. I think the, what Nicholas is looking for is a buy point on this, an entry point. Is it reaching by the C point? Um, well, here's what I can share with you. I see a confirmed sell the D point pattern that confirmed back here on the trading day of June 16th. That was at dark cloud cover. Now price yesterday closed below its profile, bottom of its profile. You're extending that. It looks to me like IBM is headed to 126.81. 126.81 is a TD9 count breakout level of support. 130.02 is another area to watch for potential support. That on a weekly basis is its oscillator and change line. The monthly negated at this at this day here it's us on a change line so this suggests ibm wants lower price i am not say buying ibm at 126.81 what i'm doing is providing you with that next target we'd have to see what kind of pattern if any is unfolding or has unfolded as ibm gets to that area but it looks to me like that's where it's headed to your confirmation of further lows inside of ibm will likely come from the 30-minute time frame chart, which completed a TD9 count bottom. If price gets below today's low, not gets, but close below 130.68, that's going to be your confirmation of a further move lower. Now, not that you can't get a bounce here, which you could easily do that, get up to about 132 and change out there. IBM still looks like it wants lower, so I'd be watching that 126.81 level. Sat P wants to take a look at Saba. So let's just do this here live because I know I don't have that already prepared. And he's looking for levels out here. Let me see if I can figure out what levels. Suggest an entry point to buy a few shares. Check the levels for Saba. Those are the levels that Sat P has taken a look at. So I've got to wait here just for a moment for the charts here to populate. 
When we take a look at Sava, you've got a bit of a consolidation with inside his daily profile. 26 bucks yesterday was tested and rejected. That is the top of that profile. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What do we have? You got a good old fashioned consolidation, but its oscillator and change line is holding as support. And on a weekly basis, price is trading above the top of its profile. The top of that profile is 2505. So intraday, is there anything here to help us intraday? The answer is no, there's not. Not just yet, there's not. 24.21 would be a buy point if price could pull back there. That's a 30-minute T9 count breakout level that was tested and held out there. I would say be patient on Saba. The reason I would say be patient, well, today could become bar number three of consecutive moves higher. This typically fails after the fourth day of consecutive moves higher. So because you've got that consolidation pattern out here, I'm not really seeing the reason that you have to jump on board. Be patient with this. Maybe you can get a pullback to the bottom of that daily profile, 2326, but it might be 2429 where you start to buy a few shares. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to one of those wonders of the world. That's Niagara Falls and speak with Michael. Michael, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hi. Thanks for taking uh, my call. I wanted to yeah. look at SoftBank ADR. Yeah. Uh, S-F-T-B-Y. Um, yeah. It's had some blunders in the past with WeWork, a lot of write-offs. Um, they just had an annual AGM the other day yeah. in Tokyo. And, you know, the, um, the CEO, is, I guess it's the chairman, he's a pretty flamboyant Japanese entrepreneur. He, um, he started talking about AI 
and uh, he's got all this fancy schmancy AI technology and that this company's going to benefit from it. And um, I started to look at the chart and the chart's very interesting. It's, it's, I, I got a funny feeling it's bottoming. And, um, okay. I I've got a feeling it's opinion. stopping. I've on got on a feeling daily, it's... daily versus the weekly versus the monthly. Yeah, but you got to take a look at, you got to have those other charts in consideration, Michael. So you're asking yeah. me what I think it's doing. I think it's topping. And the reason I think it's topping, at least at this stage of the game, is price has been inside a consolidation. Don't know whether okay. it will break through that consolidation. That's what I've got pictured on the weekly chart up here. Uh, if we take a yeah. look at it, the high, you'd probably have to take out 2480. If price takes mm -hmm. out the 2480, then you would have a measured move that would be equal to or greater than the consolidation. On the mm -hmm. daily, there's so many, there's so many gaps here I have to yeah. assume it's because of currency if it's not because of currency then you have an island top so you'd have an island top on the daily time frame as price is reaching the top of a consolidation pattern out here and on the monthly price is dealing with resistance which is at 23 at 2340 all the way up to a high of uh, 20 uh, 480 so I see SoftBank as potentially topping here the bottom would be down at the bottom of the consolidation. I don't know that we'll get back down there. It'll get back down there. But I see this well, as more gaps. of a top than the a gaps, bottom. Gaps always get filled. Uh, know, maybe again, $18? This, yeah, but this could be currency, Michael. I don't know if this is a currency uh, issue, is, uh, which yeah. I imagine they, they that it is. In Japanese yen. Yeah, so you can't really take a look at these gaps. And I apologize, we're out of time. But I see this in the consolidation. I think it's more closer to a top than it is to a bottom. And thanks for the call, and uh, best of luck to you. Folks, day two, we've got great programming lined up. I'll be back with you on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday. Thanks for joining us.